I am not human. I'm not even a monster. I am a monster who cannot be human. I am a human who cannot be a monster. I am lucky. There are many opinions as to when the practice of performing lucky dances started in the Kathmandu Valley. It is said that when King Harisim Dev brought Talezu Bhavani from Simraugarh to the valley, lucky was brought along with the goddess. Some even argue that the Thakuri king from Nuakot brought lucky to the valley. The lucky is also believed to be arrived from South India in 11th century and is worshipped for its divine power and cherished with other deities during Indrajatra festival by Newari community of Nepal. According to Nepali language genealogy, it is said that the tradition of lakhe dances was started by King Gunakam Dev. That is why the roads of Chingu Mangal, JC Devil, and Majipat areas have been named as Gunakam Dev Mark. But since the time of King Pratap Malla, lakhe dances have been performed wearing different masks. In the Kathmandu Valley, lakhe dances start from Gathakarna, that is Gatha Mangal and continued till Yene Puni, that is Indrajatra. During this one month, Lakhe are found running happily in the streets of alleys of Nepal. After one month, the locals sent Lakhe away from the city to the forest. After entering the forest, even if you try a million times, you will not meet or see Lakhe. Lakhe will disappear in the dark. The story of the origin of Lakhe, part 1. This is about the time when the Kathmandu Valley was dominated by great tantrics. There was hardly any work that they wanted to do but could not do. Tantrics understood the language of the deities and could communicate directly with the deities. Tantrics used to bring Rato Machindranath from Kamaru Kamaksha in Assam with their tantric power. God Indra, who had come to Kathmandu to steal Parijat flower, was tied with a rope and was displayed down in the middle of the road to all the people. The holy elephant of God Indra, Airavat, who has been searching for God Indra, was chased down by people living in Kathmandu Valley at that time. The people of Kathmandu Valley made a deal with the mother of God Indra to reign to the valley who had come to rescue Indra. During that time, a tantric from Kathmandu had an aspiration for social purification. Social purification means he wants to build a society where all people are good. All are well taught and all are free from all kinds of unskilled deeds and move towards efficient deeds. That tantric spent a lot of time thinking about how to build such good society. When that tantric thinks meditatively, he comes up with a plan. Every man's mind is filled with both good and bad. There is a constant conflict between these two emotions. The one whose skillful spirits overcome the unskillful spirit, such a person naturally inclines towards skillful deeds, gives alms, earns virtue, but the one whose unskilled spirit is heavy, leans towards unskilled deeds without knowing it. He hurts other and commits sin. Therefore, in order to lead the society on the path of righteousness, the unskilled feeling in the heart of every human being must end. When there is no unskilled feeling in the mind, there is no motivation to do unskilled deeds. With this in mind, the tantric, with the power of his tantric magic, accomplish something that pulls out the bad emotions from the heart of every human being like a magnet. In this way, he begins to accumulate the bad feelings he has brought from everyone in the large earthen jar and covers it with a clay lid. After months and months, he enters every house in the valley with his own eyes and peers into the heart of every man. He is satisfied when he sees no trace of bad feeling left in any house or in any person's mind. His accomplishment succeeds. After that, the thing called sin disappears from the Kathmandu Valley. All people are charitable, engaged in religious activities. No one hurts anyone. 
No one sets tears. No one humiliates or shuts anyone down. The picture of virtue is felt in such a way that even the heaven begins to shake with its wave. In order to get relief from this crisis, a meeting of gods is held in heaven. God then says, We meet people with both skill and unskilled feeling, but the tantrics of Kathmandu meet all people gods by drawing unskilled feeling, even higher than the gods. This is against the law of creation. How to balance this imbalance now? What is the solution? After a long discussion, the gods comes to a conclusion. The urgent jar in which the tantric of Kathmandu used to hold the unskilled feelings of the people was gradually stirred up. The commotion grows louder and the whole house of the tantric begins to shake like an earthquake. The tantric opens the lid and sees what has happened. As soon as the lid of the jar was opened, a terrifying monster with bloodshot eyes, dark complexion, a long messy hair on its back, an elephant's like knee and two teeth comes out screaming. From his power, Tantric then soon realizes that this monster is born out of the collection of bad emotion drawn from the minds of the people of Kathmandu Valley in which the gods did the work of filling the soul in it. The monster was hungry because he had been confined in the closed jar for many days. On the top of that, the monster was born out of the bad emotion of tens of thousands of people, so the hunger of the monster was equal to tens of thousands of people. After that, many people started disappearing in different parts of Kathmandu Valley. The valley was in trouble. All the people go to the palace with petitions. After listening to everyone, the king summons the same tantric to the royal court to find a solution to the problem. Following the king's order, the tantric perform great rituals and try to subdue the monster with his magic power. But in front of monster's power, the tantric power proves to be very weak. Defeated, the tantric begins to worship Goddess Taliju Bhavani. Goddess Taliju says, O tantric, this is all because of you. You try to upset the balance of creation. I know that you have no hidden intention to cleanse the society. But what have you forgotten is that the way to get the society on the right path is not to fill the skilled minds by taking away all the unskilled feelings in people's mind. No one is good just because they are good. People are a combination of both good and bad. You look around at creation. What do you see? It's very hot in summer and very cold in winter. Spring is green. There is night, there is day. Sometimes the light of moon is bright and sometimes it is full dull. Somewhere the eternal height of the peaks, somewhere the eternal depth of ocean. These are laws of creation. It is a personal conflict between a person to do good or to do bad. The conflict between good feelings and bad feelings continues in person's life for the rest of his life. He who can control bad feelings, his good feelings are strong. He is on a path of righteousness. Those who follow the right path are saved after death. Those who are unable to control their bad feelings turns to sin and their soul wanders after death. It is this conflict of good and evil that maintains balance in creation. The good and the bad ways are the only way to reach every moment of a person's life. It is up to the individual to decide which way to go. You as a perfect and knowledgeable tantric can show people the good way but you cannot directly interfere in anyone's mind by removing bad feelings from his mind. It is your religion to leave the final decision to them. The combination of many emotions, good and bad, is what makes a person. You have interfered with the balance of creation in the name of social cleansing. You have interfered with natural balance which your city is facing today. After hearing so much from Goddess Taliju's mouth, Tantric joins hand and begs. How can this monster be killed, mother? Once something is created, it somehow survives, says Goddess Taliju. 
Creation is never killed, only modified. You can never kill this monster again. You created the existence of a monster by taking bad part from people from here. To destroy his existence now is to destroy the existence of all your people. You can use your power to get rid of people's bad feeling, but you can't erase them. So what is the solution, mother? After hearing such a plea from Tantric, Taliju Bhawani orders. Now there is only one solution. The same power that you used to draw people's unskilled feeling, pull the unskilled feeling out of a monster mind and let it enter the human mind again. But remember, you can't take all bad emotions from that monster like you used to. Doing so destroys the monster and eliminates human as well. So you can take half of the unskilled spirit from the demon and move it to the people and then take some part of skillful spirits from the people and move it to the demon. Doing this, both monster and people will survive and the balance of creation is restored to its former state. With this command, Goddess Taliju Vavani becomes introspective. At Taliju's command, the Tantric used all his power to draw half of the unskilled spirit from the monster and distribute it equally among the people. At the same time, he fills the monster's mind with some skillful emotion from the human mind from Kathmandu Valley. After such an exchange of emotions, the human mind returns to its old state. The conflict between the skilled and unskilled begins. There is a mixture of sin and virtue in a man. Now people hurt others, even apologize. He sets tears of others, he also moves forward to wipe away tears gives wounds, also applies medicine. Some rob, some donate, some lose, some fail. Like the cycle of day and night, the cycle of sin and virtue runs inside every person. At the same time, the demonic form of the monster starts fading away. The eyes turns from bloody red to pink. The black color turns white and it looks gray. The knees, which are as thick as elephant's trunk, decreases. His immense power is also lost and becomes weak. As the monster weakens, the tantric grabs the monster and locks it inside the pot, leaving it in the middle of dense forest away from the valley. As the tantrics try to leave the pot in the dark forest, the monster plea is heard from inside the pot. O tantric, O my creator! Do not leave me alone in the forest like this. Hearing the cry of the monster, the tantric stands still and come back to the pot. The monster says, You created me by gathering people's emotion. So I am half human. Now I am full of both skillful and unskillful feeling, just as human beings are full of both skill and unskill feeling. So I am like a human. Human is like me. There are people inside me. I am inside people. Tantric, do you think a person can live alone in the forest? If people can't live alone in the jungle, how can I live? My life will be lost in this lonely forest and my death will be like the death of half of the people's emotion. So free me from this spot and let me sit among the people. I am not the same as before and you know that as well. I will sit quietly in a corner of the valley. No one will be hurt. Hearing the monster's promise, Tantric says, Oh monster, you are right, but your appearance can scare people. Your presence can cause chaos in people's society. How can I let you live in the valley? The monster then says, Then, O oh Tantric, free me from this spot so that I may walk freely in the forest and allow me to enter the valley at least one month of the year. I'm not going to hurt people. Instead, I will entertain people by jumping, dancing and running. The tantric starts to think with the demon's offer and after some thoughts, he says, I am ready to set you free and I will let you enter the city for one month of the year as you have said, but I have a condition. What condition is that tantric? My condition is that you will not be allowed to enter the valley for remaining 11 months of the year under any circumstances and for that 11 months you will be a guard of the Kathmandu Valley. 
negative force from outside will be prevented from entering the valley. You will protect the valley. After the monster accepts the condition, the tantric releases the monster from the pot and says, You are no longer a monster. You are both human and monster. You are a monster who cannot be a human. You are a human who cannot be a monster. You are lucky. In this way, the demon is free from the tantric. Everyone starts calling him lucky. From then on, every year, from Ghantakarna, that is Gathamangal, to Indrajatra, for about one month, Lakhir are allowed to enter the valley. It is a time when people are tired of the hard work of farming. Lakhe entertain the tired people by jumping and dancing as per his promise. As soon as Indrajatra is over, Lakhe are sent away from the valley to the forest. The first story of the origin of Lakhe ends here. The story of the origin of Lakhe, part 2. The story is connected with the arrival of Ratu Machinranath in Kathmandu. We have often heard the story of Lichivi King Narendra Dev bringing Ratu Machinranath from Kamaru Kamaksha Assam, India, along with Tantric Bandhu Datta Acharya of Kathmandu, Ratchakra of Patan, and Karkotak Nagras of Tautaha 1400 years ago. But who was that Ratu Machinranath? Who was his family? Did the family send him to Kathmandu voluntarily? Or was he forcibly brought here? Had he been forcibly brought back? Wouldn't his family have tried to take him back to Assam? How did they try? The story of the origin of Lakhe is connected to these questions. It is believed that Rato Machinranath was a prince of demon clan. He was born on the Kamaru Kamaksha in Assam as the son of the demon king Shasi. One day, after the people in Kathmandu Valley have been starving for 12 years and starving to death, King Narendra Dev asks the then great tantric Bandhu Datta, What is the way to end this famine? Bandhu Datta says, Bodhisattva is born as Rato Machinranath in the palace of the demon king Shasi. Rato Machinranath is the contemporary deity. If Rato Machinaranath can be brought here somehow, people of Kathmandu Valley will be saved from this famine. After hearing this from Bandhu Datta, King Narendra Dev orders to go to Kamaru Kamaksha in Assam and make arrangements to bring Rato Machinaranath. Accordingly, Bandhu Datta, Ratchakra, Karkotak, and King Narendra Dev himself reach Kamaru Kamaksha. Arriving there, Lichave King Narendra Dev goes to the court of the demon king Sasi, meets him and asks his son to end the famine of his kingdom. Sasi discusses this with his queen and siblings. No one is willing to hand over the country's prince to a foreign king. Narendra Dev returns empty-handed. After the first attempt failed, Tantric Bandhu Datta Acharya devised a plan. He meditates on Hagri Vairab of Bungamati and Karkotak Nagras and insert them both in the stomach of King Sasi. This causes immense pain to King Sasi. King Sasi could not hold his breath, nor could he breathe easily. King Sasi's pain is getting worse no matter how much the doctors of all demons try to cure him. Unable to see the grief of the king, who was screaming for help between life and death, is there no way out? asks the demon queen. There is only one solution, queen. Bandhu Datta Acharya from Kathmandu is still here in Kamaru Kamaksha. He is a great tantric. The diagnosis of any disease is in his hand. If he could be called for treatment somehow, the king's disease would be cured. On the advice of royal physicians, Bandhu Datta Acharya is invited to the demon's court. Bandhu Datta was waiting for this opportunity. Bandhu Datta cures the demon king's disease. The demon king says happily and gratefully, You saved my life. What reward do you need for this, Tantric? Taking a chance, Bandhu Datta joined hands and said, There has been famine in our kingdom for 12 years. The power to end that famine is in the hands of your youngest son, Rato Machinranath. So please allow your young prince to be taken to our kingdom. The demon king is in trouble. After thinking for a while, he says, O oh, Tantric, 
You have asked for something which I do not have the right to give. The mother has the right over the younger son. His mother had already rejected the offer. Our kingdom has also decided not to send him. So whatever you ask for, I will not let you down. The second attempt to take Rato Machirinath also fails. Then the Tantric used the last weapon. The Tantric binds the demon prince Rato Machirinath with his Tantric power and makes him enter the urn in the form of Bumblebee and return to Kathmandu carrying the urn. After arriving in Kathmandu, Bandhu Datta returns the beetle safe Rato Machirinath trapped in the urn to the real form by his Tantric power. The glory of Rato Matsunarnath ends the famine of 12 years. Meanwhile, chaos erupts in the demonic palace of Kamaru Kamaksha when the child prince suddenly disappears. The queen gives up eating and drinking and goes into mourning. Even the king is worried. He sends his spies around to find the prince. After a long search, the spies bring the news. The prince was taken to Kathmandu by Acharya Bandudatta by making a beetle and capturing him in the urn. The king and the queen are shocked to hear this news. They look at their eldest son's face and try to calm themselves down. But they can't. The demon king loses his peace of mind as he worries about his prince. The monster king comes to Kathmandu from Kamaru Kamaksha with his queen and some of the nobles to see if Prince Machinranath can be returned. The demon king was even ready to beg the king and the people of Kathmandu. They come but to enter Kathmandu is not as easy as they thought. The four Vairavs guarding the four guns entering the Kathmandu valley do not allow the demon king, demon queen and other demon to enter in any way. The Vairavs stand as a wall in the path of demon and their purpose. The demon king requests at least once to deliver his message to the king of the Kathmandu valley, but Vairavs refuse. In the end, there is a fierce battle between Vairav and the demon. Both groups are equally powerful. No one is inferior to others. So no matter how hard they try, they can't beat each other. Neither the Vairavs can drive the demon group out of the valley, nor can the demon defeat the Vairav army and enter the valley. The demon decided not to return to Assam under any circumstances without taking Prince Rato Machinranath. When the monster realizes that they can't enter the valley and win the battle, they consult with each other. Then they took a strategy of brotherhood. The monster declared a ceasefire and settled in various parts of the forest outside the Kathmandu Valley. In time, the demons seized the power of Machinranath had started reigning in the valley after 12 long years. The people of Kathmandu are working day and night to grow grain in the fields. It melts the minds of demons. They want to extend a helping hand to the people of the Kathmandu Valley and enter the valley as agricultural laborers in disguise. The physical strength of the demon is naturally greater than that of human beings. It makes very easy for the people of the valley as the work was done by the monster who has come in disguise in very short time. In the fields, crops begin to flourish. At other times, the field will never be barren. When the crops grow, the farmer prospers, the state prospers. This cooperation between man and the demon who has come in disguise lasts a long time. One day, the tantrics of Kathmandu find out about the power of agricultural worker from outside. The tantrics of Kathmandu have doubts. A closer look reveals that these agricultural workers are polygamous monsters disguised as human beings. But by then, the monsters have become integral to Kathmandu's public life, especially agriculture. There was a danger of halving the crops if the monster were chased away or not allowed to enter the valley. Taking such a risk could be counterproductive for the daily life of the people dependent on agriculture and for the prosperity of Kathmandu Valley. Instead of this, associating with the demons in every possible way, making the most of the physical strength of the demons but not allowing the demons to mingle with the inhabitants of the place was a credit to all. With this in mind, 
The Tantrix sees the Demon King and Queen in human disguise and set two conditions for their release. The first condition is that the monster continue to support the people of the valley in the way they are helping in agriculture. Due to this, after the completion of farming, for one month, the demons are allowed to enter the cities of the valley, to be allowed to roam in the streets here, to be allowed to run and to dance merrily. But for the rest of the month, the demons are not allowed to enter the city and should stay in the forest. The second condition is that, on the day when the soil of Kathmandu bears gold and on the day when the state reaches the sea of prosperity, Machinranath will be dismissed and sent back to Kumaru Kamaksha Rato Machinranath with the demons. The straight head demons agreed to the terms of the tantrics. The demons did not see the cunning tricks hidden behind the curtain. The same cunning has kept the demons tight around the valley even today. So far, no gold has been produced in the soil of Kathmandu. No one has even measured the sea of prosperity. The demons are fighting in the hope that Rato Machinranath will be brought back to Kumaru Kamaksha on the day when gold is plentiful here in Kathmandu Valley and the day when this state is a sea of prosperity. The people of the Kathmandu Valley have not broken their promise as well. These monsters are allowed to enter the city for one month of the year after the end of farming and they roam the streets, run and enjoy themselves. This process is still in practice today. According to this story, Lake is the form of the same monster. In other words, the father, mother and relatives of Rato Machinranath who came from Kamaru Kamaksha to take back Rato Machinranath are Lake. The story of the origin of Lake, part 3. This story of the origin of Lake is very similar to the story of Kantakarna, that is Gathamangal Kyak. At that time, the people here used to make a living by farming. Everyone was busy planting paddy. Since they had to grow rice and eat rice all year round, they used to concentrate on farming in spite of wind and hail. If someone made a mistake, the whole Kathmandu kingdom would have to endure famine. Therefore, no one was allowed to leave farming until the planting was completed. In the middle of transplanting, even if a family member dies, they have to continue working in the fields. Even today, the Newari natives here call farming or ropai as Sinajia. In Newari language, the meaning of Sinajia is to work very hard. The tantrics called on the demon to help the farmer in this difficult task. Different types of monster comes, tall, short, red, black, hairy and some bald. The power of such monster is five times greater than that of human being. What five people do is done by the same one monster. The demon comes and helps, but then a problem arises. The monster which is five times more powerful than man need five times more food than a man. What do people eat when they have to feed the monster a large portion of the sprouted grain? What is the essence of increasing production by bringing and raising monster in this way? Understanding this problem of people, the clever tantrics come up with another plan. After the planting is completed, the monster is paraded around the city for a month with great pomp and then is allowed to enter the city only after the next year's planting. When the monster leave, the monster are fed meat and eggs. Meat and eggs are monster's favorite food. In Newari language, meat is called la and egg is called ki. That is why the Newari locals call the monster who came to help in farming and dance in the towns of the valley for a month as la ki in their mother language. La ki became Lake over time. These three stories of origins of Lake are not historically proven. No inscription or manuscript or genealogies has been written about Lake. Although not historically proven, there is some hidden meaning in these three stories. The first story explains the philosophical aspect associated with Lake. It says that people are a mixture of skilled and unskilled emotions. Skillfulness is a human quality and unskilled spirit is a benevolent quality. From the outside, we see the human form, but the demonic mind is still alive inside us. Just as Lake are monster figure when viewed from outside, 
but the human mind is also a leaf inside. In essence, we are all human and demon mismatches. In essence, we are all lucky. The ones we know today as lucky or monsters may be hired laborers from outside the van. Being people outside of their race and culture, the people of Kathmandu Valley may have been presented the foreign laborers as the form of lucky or monster. Calling people outside their community monster is an old tradition of civilization. It is believed that the Gatamuga Kyak, which is made in the crossroad on the day of Kanta Karna, that is Gatamangal, is also called upon to help in agriculture. So, both Lake and Gatamugu Kyak can be a reflection of the workers brought inside the Kathmandu Valley from outside for agricultural help, and both these festivals can be related to the farewell of those outside workers. Every Lake here has its own stories its own love stories. What is the story of Patan's Mangal Bazaar, Mipua Lake? Where did he get the chorus to play with fire? Isn't that Lake offered to play with fire? Mipua Lake's dance starts from the Natyasur temple complex of Saugal and Mipua Lake have to walk around 21 places in the inner settlement of Patan. This is the special Lake of Patan. Such Lake playing with fire cannot be found anywhere else. There is a reason behind him walking with the fire. Mipua Lake's Love Story Many, many years ago, when Lake discussed as people came to help in farming, a young Lake always came to help same Japu family in Patan. When Lake came to help in such work, it was decided in advance which year to go to which place. It was customary not to send same Lake to the same place every year so as not to have too much connection between the Lake and the people. Lake who came to Kathmandu this year were sent to Kirtipur next year. Lake who went to Bhaktapur this year were sent to Patan next year. The Tantrics practiced this ritual from the beginning so that there would always be a distance between the Lake and the people. In spite of this rule, one young Lake used to work on the farm on the same Japu family in Patan. If any year, the young Lake would fail to arrange his work in Patan, at that time, the young Lake would work twice as hard. In the beginning, that young Lake could go to his assigned place and do all the work with lightning speed, and from there he would go directly to Patan in disguise and complete all the work of his favorite Jap family. There was a special reason why that young Lake go to Patan to that particular Japu's farm every year. The young Lake fell in love with Japu's youngest daughter. Their conversation started. The conversation turned into a secret meeting. One day, when the young Lake was on leave after finishing his farm work, he said to Japuni, Tonight at midnight, please wait in the backyard. I am coming. I will tell you one thing. Japuni said yes and left inside. It was a moonlight night. At the same time, Japuni saw someone coming towards her with flames. At first, Japuni thought that her boyfriend might have come with a lamp in his hand to see the way in the dark. But as the flames uprose, her heart sank. Her boyfriend was standing still in front of her, but there was no lamp in his hand. Instead, flames were coming out of his two hands. What have you done? She said nervously. Why are you burning your hands? It won't hurt me, said Lake, disguised as a man. That's what I wanted to show you. Can you carry a fire in your hand? No, I have the power to walk with fire in my hand. Power? What power? The power of Lake. The power of Lake? Japuni was surprised. Yes, the power of Lake, said the Lake in human guise. I am not a man. I am a Lake. All the farmers who have come to work in your field are lucky. We come to work like this every year in human form. Japuni did not say a word, but her eyes were wide open. We are not allowed to sow our true farms, Lake said. But I love you, and I don't want to hide anything from you. I don't want to give you any illusion. My cover is a human, but I love you with all my heart as a lucky. I want you. If you love me, I want you to love my heart, who is lucky. Japanese mouth was still shut, 
but her eyes wide open. My love is not selfish. Not only receiving is love, but also giving is love. I love you. I keep doing it, but I will not keep you in my love. You are free to live your life your way. Then Japanese said, Do only Laki know how to love? Don't we human know how to love? Do we just seek love? Japuni placed her cold hand on the hot palm of the fiery Laki. The blazing fire was extinguished. While staying in the valley for a month, I will come to see you every night with a fire in my hand, said Laki. Mipua Laki is the same boyfriend who comes to meet his girlfriend in the dark with a fire in his hand. Mipua Laki's love story can be a mismatch of story and fact. Now, if we consider Laki to be a reflection of the waste laborers brought in from outside to help the people of Kathmandu Valley in agriculture, then this love story reflects the intercaste conflict here. The waste laborer must have been of a different race and culture than the Newars. While staying here for work, he may have had a love affair with a local woman. If our society has not been able to accept interracial relation with an open heart now, then it must have been difficult to accept at that time. Perhaps that is why in this love story, the relationship between Mipua Lake and Japuni is compared as sun and moon. There are many such tragic love stories in the valley regarding Lake. Love story of Pimba Lake of Patan. The love story of Lake and a local girl is also connected with the Pimbal Pone of Patan. Although it is colloquially called Pimbal Pokeri, its real name is Jakmadu Puku, that is a pone without a foundation in Newari language. Here too, one Lake fell in love with one local girl. Lake used to come every night to meet his girlfriend secretly. It was not possible to enter the human settlement during these. It was forbidden even in the Lake communities. If any Lake was found in human settlement without any work, all Lake will kill that Lake throwing stones at him. That is why that Lake used to come in the middle of the night deceiving everyone's eyes. When that Lake met her like this, Lake wanted his girlfriend to stay with him all night. But his girlfriend was always in a hurry. She was worried about getting up the next morning to fetch water. At that time, there was no pond in Pimbahal. Where there is a Pimbahal pond now, that area was an open field. The people of Pimbahal were very sad about the water. The people of Pimbahal used to reach Tapahiti far from Patandoka or reach Bagmati of Sankamun to fetch water. Not one night, not two nights. Every night, after seeing his girlfriend in such a hurry, Lake decided to dig a pond in Pimbahal. But Lake cannot dig the pond taking many days. It should have been dug in one night and filled with water. If any person somehow sees him digging the pond, then the Lake will be in big trouble. Lake carried the stone from Godavari with all his might. On the way, a man from Purnachandi saw a stone being rolled and asked, where are you taking so many stones? Lake said, I'm building a pond in Pimbahal. Hearing this, the man from Purnachandi wanted to dig a pond in his own place around Purnachandi. The man from Purnachandi said, then leave some stone in Purnachandi as well. Lake did not agree. Purnachandi's clever man threatened Lake and said, If you don't drop the stone, I will open your secrets. I will tell everyone that Lake have entered the settlement of people and broken the law. Afraid of opening his secrets, Lake left some part of the stone carried from Godavari in Purnachandi. It is believed that Purnachandi Pond was made from this same stone. Half of midnight passed while carrying stones and chatting with the guy from Purnachandi. After that, Lake hurriedly dug a pond. Mining continued till the water is receded. After the root brushed, Lake laid stones on the bottom of the pond. As it was almost morning, it was not possible to add soil to the stone. In the same condition as it was brought from Godavari, the stone was laid and the water flowing from the source was fell. That is why this pond in Pimbahal is called Jak Madhu Puku, meaning the pond without foundation in Newari language because the foundation is not laid properly. The sky was becoming bright. Women began to visit Pimbal Stupa and the four chaitis opposite to it. 
Lackey wasn't now problem. Lackey did not get a chance to run away. Then Lackey hide under a rock in front of the bottom of the pool. After this incident, Lackey's girlfriend got rid of the water problem, but her meeting with Lackey ended. Lackey never got out after getting stuck in the bottom of the pool. Lackey is happy with the happiness of his girlfriend. Imagining that your girlfriend is close to Lackey is enough. Every time she tosses the water in the pool, she feels like a Lackey is here. At that time, even Lackey find his girlfriend's presence. That hidden stone in the northeast corner of Pimbal Pond are still intact, which is called Lackey Lung or Lackey Kodunga, meaning Lackey Stone. As the water dries up in the summer, Lackey Stone are clearly visible. There is a belief that when the sun shines on Lackey Stone, then the rain starts. Majipa Lackey's Love Story There was one Lackey, a frightening Lackey with a red face. His hair was also red, eyes redder, like hot blood just dripping. The mouth was as white as the whole universe. Two tiger-like teeth came out of his mouth. The fingers of his hand were like that of beers. When such a frightening lackey came in human form to help in farming, he fell in love with a Japanese daughter from Majipa, city of Kathmandu. Japanese daughter also fell in love with lackey. Although they could not live together, they swore to die together. Farming was done. Even so, Lackey came to visit his girlfriend. He used to come to Majipa city at night, deceiving everyone's eyes and used to do all the work of his girlfriend in the blink of an eye. At the same time, one child after another started disappearing from Majipa city. The people of the city were worried about which monster had stolen their children. To get rid of this problem, a meeting was held. They decided to take turns patrolling the toll road overnight. One day, the people knew about the red lackey who had come to meet his girlfriend. The people got together and went to Japu's house. They knocked on the door loudly. Now that red lackey had no choice but to stand in front of everyone and make his real identity public. Lackey opened the door and showed everyone his true form. Lackey was trying to explain, but the people did not want to hear him. Lackey was kicked out with a stone and sticks. Of course, if Lackey wanted, he could have consumed everyone in an instant. He had once tried to light a fire by opening his mouth, but at the same time, he saw his girlfriend staring at the door. Tears were flowing from his girlfriend's eyes. His girlfriend's silent and stunned eyes were saying, No matter what they do, don't show your power. Realizing the silence in his girlfriend's silent eyes, Lackey taped his open mouth and quietly endured the attack on him. Lackey was bleeding, but he did not attack anyone. In the end, seeing his condition, the people felt pity. They stopped beating and gave Lackey a chance to clarify. Lackey admitted that he was in love with Japanese daughter and said, I can't live without her. Lackey also admitted that he had picked up some of the children himself and said, This is something that should not be done by me. I regret my mistake. There will be no such mistake in the future. Majipa people held a meeting once again. Then the people said, We can release you on one condition. From now on, you will protect the people of this town and the children here from demons, monsters and any other demonic forces. You will also help everyone in this town in case of any disaster. If you are willing to do this, we will let you stay in this town. Lake accepted the condition. But still the people did not accept his love affair. However, Lake was happy and Japanese daughters was also happy. Although they could not live together for the rest of their lives, from now on they could live close to each other in the same town. The residents of Majipa built a separate house for Lake as per their promise and kept Lake locked up in the same house. This is none other than the well known Majipa Lake of Kathmandu. Even today, this house is known as Lake House in Kathmandu and the place is called Lake Nani. Locals worship Majipa Lake as Lake Aju. Even though he is a demon, he is believed to have a spirit of love and self sacrifice. That is why Majipa Lake is also known as 
peaceful vibe up. Every year during Yenya Puni, that is Indra Jatra, Majipa Lake are taken out of Lake Nani for one week. He walks in the streets of Kathmandu, spreading his red hair, lifting both his legs, clapping his hips and hooting. This is also the test done for Lake, who has promised never to do anything to the people of the town. For this, a 3 to 12 year old child jumps back and forth to tease Lake. He is known as Jalincha or Dragonfly. Jalincha teases Lake in various gestures. Jalincha deceives Lake and makes him hysterical. Wherever Lake go, Jalincha follow him teasing. Lake also chases, run, play, but do not harm. Lake then pass the exam. Likewise, in a child dressed in a green from head to toe runs back and forth around Mipua Lake. The child's mask is also green. The hair is also green. The child walk around teasing Mipua Lake, tricks him and makes him hysterical. He is called Vyagute or a frog. Both frog or Vyagute and dragonfly or Jalincha are beneficial organisms for paddy cultivation. We see dragonflies flying near the fields during the paddy cultivation season. The children grab it and tie a string around its tail and fly away. Jalincha or dragonfly helps to increase the yield by eating the insects that infest the paddy. In the past, when there was no pesticide, this dragonfly was a cure for pest in rice. Frogs or vaguta, on the other hand, helps to increase soil fertility and also feed on insect and rice. It is believed that the more frogs there are in the field, the higher the production and the more nutrients. To pay homage to the frog, the neighbors of the valley worship frog on the day of Gunapuni or Janai Purnima by offering frog rice, kuati and meat. In this way, the association of agriculture with beneficial frog or vaguta and jalincha or dragonfly in Lake dance shows that this festival has a direct relationship with agriculture. On this basis too, we can assume that Lake are waste laborers brought from outside the valley to help in the agriculture of the Kathmandu Valley and Lake dances is a celebration organized for the farewell of those workers. <laughs>